hello to the new Syria. A sunny place to relax, unwind and leave the world behind. Exploding with history, culture and excitement, Syria is always beautiful. At least that's the official line being spruced by the Syrian government in their tourism campaigns. Yes, tourism campaigns. I could not be more excited. And in these posts by a horde of travel vloggers holidaying under regime supervision. Let's go inside. Under President and accused war criminal Bashar al-Assad, the message is that the worst of the war is over. The new Syria is open, not just to visitors and investors, but to the millions of refugees who fled the regime and the war. It seems almost too good to be true. Det er på at se økonomi og være godt og det er sikkerhedsland og Bashar Assad han vil gerne have os tilbage, men det tror vi bare slet ikke på det. Det vil være virkelig farligt for vores liv i hvert fald, hvis det nu det vil det har sendt os tilbage. After 12 years of civil war, a growing number of countries are now saying that it's safe for Syrian refugees to go home. But with six million people still displaced, we've come to find out if going back to Syria could in fact be a deadly mistake. may seem an odd place to start a story about the war in Syria. But the country has taken in more than 34,000 Syrian refugees since the war broke out in 2011. <laughs> The Awad siblings fled Syria's capital Damascus with their parents almost a decade ago. Granted temporary residency, the siblings have thrived in Denmark. 22-year-old Mariam works in aged care. 19-year-old Aya recently finished high school and 17-year-old Muhammad is still studying. Their memories of Syria they recount in fluent Danish. Det er også slå på den her, hvad er det, det kæmmer vi også. Jeg fik selv min asme derfra, ikke? Ja. Yeah. Sparked by pro-democracy protests in 2011, the Syrian civil war has left the country violently scarred. <laughs> Fighting between the Russian-backed forces of President Assad and a range of rebel groups has killed more than 350,000 people, inflicted barbaric human rights abuses and seen 7 million Syrians flee the country with a further 6 million displaced at home. But today, after regaining control of roughly 70% of the country, the Assad regime says it's time for citizens to return. Talking about the future of Syria, I don't think it's, it's fully open. Despite the claims, stories of regime intimidation and the abuse of returnees are common. And only 6% of Syrians, once labelled as traitors for fleeing the war, have voluntarily gone back. So what was it that you wanted to show me? Yes, I want to show you here. After escaping the horrors of the Syrian war, the Awads thought they'd never return. But in 2019, Mariam and Aya received a devastating letter from the Danish government. 
Og så her, det indgår uh, i vores uh, vurdering af dit opholdstids og grøn uh, situation i Rif Damaskus provinsen mm. over en længere periode siden maj 2018 har ændret sig markant. Det er derfor vores vurdering, at det ikke er en real risiko for at blive udsat for overgreb i strid, i strid med den europæiske men, mm. uh, menneske uh, mm. hmm. So, what does it mean for you and your sister? Det betyder det ikke for længe med opholdsstørrelse. Claiming that some parts of Syria are now safe, Denmark's immigration ministry cancelled the sisters' visas and ordered them to go back. Um, det er virkelig svært at tænke på det. Det er virkelig skræmmende at tænke på sådan noget der, om vi skal tilbage til Syrien. Vi, vi, vi ved slet ikke, vi, jeg kom slet, altså, jeg kom slet ikke tanker om, at det vil sende os tilbage efter sejren, så vi har boet i Danmark. In a cruel twist, Their parents have permanent asylum as political refugees. And Mohammed is a minor, so he can't be deported, leaving the sisters to go back to Syria alone. I think that I come back to Syria and I have a bank, because I have no one there, I have no family, I have no one there. I think it's bad if I smile and my sister comes back to Syria. The sisters now join the more than 1,000 Syrians who have had their visas reassessed thanks to a seismic shift in Danish immigration policy. Charlotte Slente from the Danish Refugee Council explains. There was a law introduced in Denmark back, back in 2015 to grant temporary permits to refugees to Denmark, not based on their individual sort of human rights uh, situation or security situation, but based on the generalized situation of war and fighting in, in Syria. And it was also said that if conditions of fighting uh, improve only a little bit, we might be looking at sending people uh, back. Based on the assessment of Danish authorities, refugees from designated conflict zones were granted temporary sanctuary, but their visas could be revoked if war ended in their areas. In 2019, with Assad's forces retaking large areas of the country, Denmark classified Damascus and its outer regions as safe cancelling hundreds of protection visas in the process. We do not understand why Denmark wants to stand out as the only country in Europe returning Syrians to Syria. I mean, these are people who have gone through so much difficulty. They have found refuge in Denmark. They are trying to build a life here. Their children go to school here. People have learned Danish. It's very, very difficult to understand these decisions by the Danish government, I have to admit. Skal I have papir med til ham og sådan noget? Ja, skal jeg tage op hele min papir. Tage hele papir, ja. Facing deportation, Mariam and Aya have applied for a hearing with the Danish Refugee Appeals Board. With the help of a lawyer, the sisters will argue they cannot safely return to Syria because their father is wanted by the regime. What would happen to you, do you think, if you were sent back to Syria? Men det samme, så vil de tage os på grund af min far. De vil gerne have min far, og så, sagde, og så vil de på et eller andet måde at komme i uh, kontakt med min far. Hvis han, ikke, uh, han vil ikke tilbage til Syrien, så blev vi dræbt ned. Og så vil de gerne voldtage os, og så bagefter vil de gerne dræbe, uh, dræbe os bagefter. Det er fordi vi flyver fra krigen, for ikke vi kan uh, dø eller skære sådan noget med os. Det er derfor Danmark det er mit land. Jeg vil slet ikke forlade Danmark. Mariam and Aya believe they have a strong case, but it's now been two years since they lodged their appeal, and they still don't have a hearing date. Men tror jeg, det vil lykkes. Advokaten har. Det skal det. Eller som om vi kan få det. The Awad sisters face an anxious wait, but other refugees are in a more frightening limbo.
brand new هدية السماء اسمها هدية السماء أنا من دمشق من سوريا عندي ثلاث أولاد بها عمرها 11 سنة يحيى عمره 10 ويوسف عمره 8 أنا صار لي سنة هلا ساكنة بقى نستعود يعني مثل ما محبوسة بسوريا محبوسة هون Refugees who lose their appeals are brought to Avonstrup to await deportation. Last year, Hadia and her children lost their temporary protection status after living in Denmark for close to a decade. Adia refused to leave, and now she cannot be forcibly deported because of the Geneva Convention. Denmark and, and other Western governments don't recognize uh, the government of uh, Bashar al-Assad, which means that you can actually not make an agreement with, with uh, that regime about sending uh, Syrians back. Right, and until that happens then they can't send anybody back, they're going to send them to these centers. Yes. That sounds like they could be there forever. I mean, they could be with there for a very, very long time. I would, uh, I would assess. دراسة ما بقدر أدرس لأنه أنا ما وقعت على الترحيل. ما فيني إني أشتغل لأنه ما لي موقع على الترحيل. هلا بس إنه بس الانتظار. بس يعني ما في غير هيك إنه مستني. Indefinite detention seems at odds with Denmark's socially progressive reputation, but the country is changing. Hoping to steal votes from rising populist parties, Denmark's left-wing government has introduced a series of hardline immigration reforms, reminiscent of Australia's Stop the Boat scheme. It's our goal that they should go back home. Aiming for zero asylum seekers, refugees can now be sent to Rwanda for processing, have their assets confiscated to pay for detention, and those without visas who can lawfully be deported are being removed by force. What happens to Hadia next is entirely up to Danish authorities. But this mother is adamant there's one place she will never go. But is returning to Syria actually a death sentence? Turkey has borne the brunt of the Syrian refugee crisis. It's taken in about 3.6 million refugees, almost four times the number has taken in for the entire European Union. In cities close to the border, like Gaziantep, many Syrians have heard the regime's promise of peace. And we're here to find out what happens to those who return to Syria. Hi, Evan. Hi. 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 Good morning, how are you? Good morning, good. Yeah, good. Thank you. Mohammed Taha is a prominent Syrian activist and founder of NGO Justice for Life. As part of his work, Mohammed has been inside Syria, interviewing returnees and their families. Today, he's agreed to share his findings and take us to the Syrian border. Yeah, no, I'm not. One, one sec, one sec, sorry. 
if we can get there. We stopped at a police checkpoint. Can we take the press card, please? Recent violence and water strikes near the border have authorities on high alert. هنا المعبر الحدودي بين سوريا وتركيا وهون هاي الأبنية اللي مبينة قدامها هي سوريا But with Syria in walking distance, this is as far as we can go. يعني حال الوضع عم محزن بل أو صعبة غير آمن الوصول لسوريا Just 10 kilometers from here Turkish forces have been fighting various militias, and in November last year, Kurdish rebels were bombed in regime-held Aleppo. Clashes between Assad's forces and opposition groups continue in the province of Idlib. And last month, Damascus was hit by Israeli airstrikes. So but despite continued fighting, it seems the greatest threat facing returnees is not war. What are you finding about people who are going back, returnees going back to Syria over the past few years? شهادات من هذول الناجيات من المعتقل يتحدثون فيها عن الاستغلال الجنسي اللي كان يحصل وايضا كان في يتعرضوا لحالات ممكن اغتصاب وحالات تحرش داخل المعتقل وايضا بعض الروايات او القصص اللي كانوا يحكوا لنا اياها الاشخاص اللي التقينا معاهم بانه كانوا يتعرضوا لابتزاز على الحواجز وفي منهم يتعرض ايضا للتعذيب والاهانه على الحواجز البعض أيضا منهم صرح بأنه هذول الأشخاص وخصوصا من فئة الشباب تم سحبهم إلى الخدمة الإلزامية بالجيش Away from the border, we managed to secure an interview with a young man who recently went back to Syria and says he was detained by the regime. His story is frightening. فترة يمكن ثلاث شهور بالسجن. سبب من أسباب إنه خربت الدولة ون يعني انضرب وإهانات وذل وشحوط يعني بيحملوك شيء أنت ما كيش سبب فيه ولا لك أي دخل فيه إنه أنتوا أهل المنطقة الفلانية أنتوا خربتوا أنتوا طلعتوا أنتوا سويتوا وأنا وقت لما صارت الأحداث هاي كنت يعني صغير كنت وقتها كان عمري 14 سنة. إبراهيم and his family fled from Syria to Jordan when he was just a boy. They returned to their village when they thought it was safe. But when Ibrahim visited Damascus in 2019 to apply for a passport, he says he fell victim to the regime. كان طلع الورقة هاي وصلنا هناك على في مبنى هو بيقولون الجوازات أول ما وصلنا على المبنى هذا. نشاف اسمي فور من وقت اعتقلون وهم كان كان عيلون يعني معاملتهم انه كحيوانات تعلقوك على الحيط من ايديك وتظل يعني فوق الثمان ساعات تسع ساعات عشر ساعات يحط واحد جنبيك يبلش يضرب فيه وضرب ضرب انه يخليك انت وينك تسمع صوت اللي جنبك انه شو في عندك مثلا حكي تحكي واذا ما انتاش عامل الاشي بتقول انه انا عملته يعني بس مشان ما يتوصل للمرحلة اللي وصل اللي اللي وصل فيها الشاب اللي جنبك مثلا يعني الضرب اللي يضربونه اياه والتعذيب شيء مو طبيعي ابراهيم says he was released without charge after a relative bribed prison officials 
But he was immediately taken into the army and served six months before fleeing and later paying people smugglers to get him to Turkey. What do you think would happen to you if you went back to Syria now? إذا برجع أسا حاليا الفترة هاي أو الفترة اللي قدام لو بعد سنة وسنتين اعتقال فورا والله علم يعني بطلع عايش من الأفرع اللي راح فوت عليها ولا ما بطلعش Shockingly, Ibrahim and others like him could soon face that situation. There are rumors the Assad regime is negotiating the forcible return of Syrians from Turkey. I ask Ibrahim why he thinks the regime wants them back. The reason the main reason that they are going to do this is the main reason. Because this is the main reason. Because a lot of people have been in the middle of the war. الرقم الكذا ويطلع يدفعوا ويطلع شو والسبب الثاني بدهم عالم تروح الجيش. Some governments in Europe are now saying that Syria is safe to go back to. What would you say about that? إنه راح يتندم كثير وراح يعانوا من العيش هناك. سجن يعني معروف سجن عند النظام السوري. النساء اللي ممكن يرجعوا من مناطق خصوصا المناطق اللي هي خارج سوريا خلينا نقول الدول الاوروبيه على سبيل المثال او الدول المجاوره قد يتعرضوا لانتهاكات وقد يتعرضوا لاعتقال عند دخولهم قد يتعرضوا لاختفاء قسري نعم نحن نقوم بش... يعني بشكل يومي لتوثيق الاحداث وتوثيق كافه الانتهاكات نلتقي بالشهود الذين تعرضوا للاعتقال او تعرضوا لهم للموت تحت التعذيب المناطق الخاضعه لسيطره الحكومه السوريه مطلقا ليست امنه. We put these allegations to the Syrian government, but they did not respond. According to human rights groups, over 95,000 people have been forcibly disappeared by the regime since the war began. A world away, Mariam and Aya's fight against deportation to Syria is at a critical point. The sister's case is finally being heard by the Danish Refugee Appeals Board. They hope that by presenting evidence similar to Muhammad and Ibrahim's, the board will rule that deporting them to Syria is inhumane. Vi ved ikke, hvad der kommer til at ske med os. Vi er meget nervøse. Vi ved ikke. Stress. Der er ikke nogen ord til det. Nej, vi er meget stressende. After a two-year wait, the sisters are finally called before the board. With their future in the hands of Danish authorities, I want to know how they ended up here in the first place. But when Danish authorities classified parts of Syria as safe, their decision was partly based on the findings of a 2019 report co-authored by the DRC. The report on Syria was a report on the security situation in Syria back then in 2019 when it was elaborated. And what was the finding of your report? I mean, the report itself doesn't provide any conclusions. It only talked about the security situation and saying that, yes, security conditions have improved in Damascus and Rift Damascus, so the broader area of, of Syria. But the Danish government decided to interpret the fact that there is no fighting as being equal to it being safe to sending back Syrians to, to Syria. Is that the problem with the report, basically, that it's allowed it to be used in this way? No, I think the, the, the major problem here is the law that was passed back in 2015, where you even say that slight improvements in the situation of fighting in a given country 
could pave the way for actually starting to look at returns. That was known before your report was actually written. Mm -hmm. So by then coming to the conclusion that there is some peace in some parts of the country, were you knowingly getting yourselves in that situation where the report would be used as a basis? I don't think you can say that. This report doesn't say anything about whether it's safe for Syrians to return. Yeah, but you, you knew the government was looking for a reason to send people back. They had, the, they had the visa category for that. So again, was it the right thing to be involved? Is it not better perhaps to have not been involved in the report that now is being cherry-picked? There's always a risk that you can use a report in an erroneous way, which was which was uh, done here. Does it make you perhaps rethink whether the DRC should be doing these sort of reports in future? Actually, we consider every time we are invited in to participate in, in one of these fact-finding reports, whether we want to contribute or not. And we have obviously serious conversations with authorities here uh, on, on these uh, topics and continue to do so. Historically, the third largest contributor to the DRC's budget has been the Danish government. The DRC vehemently maintains that this does not influence their work or their reports. After a two-year wait, the refugee board has finally reached a verdict in the Awad sisters' case. Mariam and Aya have been granted a continued resident visa, overturning their deportation and paving the way to full citizenship. But the moment is bittersweet. A third of appeals that reach the court fail, leaving families to choose between a detention centre or going back to Syria. Vi skal ikke tilbage til Syrien. Vi skal blive i Danmark. Danmark, det er vores land nu. 